is that I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the national educator for Shannon Fabrics. And um, I am here today. We're going to be making the Lux throw. Okay. So I'm happy that you've joined us. Thanks for um, staying home and staying safe and joining us here today on Sew Together Tuesday. Um, we're going to be making a Lux throw. So I have a few samples to show you guys. Um, the one that we're going to make today is smaller. I'm going to show you why. Because the pattern that you can download from our website. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you should be able to um, get our pattern for it. You'll go to a, there'll be a blog post there about how to make the Luxro, and there'll be a link for it to download, okay? But this pattern, um, it's great. I mean, I said I wrote it, so. Um, but it's a great, it's a great little throw that you can make, okay? But it is very, very, very large. So I made, I made this one. <laughs> it's really big, um, but it's really, it's sort of lovely. So it's a really nice one for your bed. It covers the whole top of our bed, which we have a full, I can't remember, we have a queen. Um, so anyway, it covers the top of our bed. That's how big it is. So it ends up being um, about 68 by 70, or no, 58 by 78 or something like that. Um, so the pattern will tell you how big it is, but it's a nice big size. This one is made with two yards on each side. So that's what that length is, is two yards with some seam allowances. Okay, so it's huge. But the cool thing about this is one, this is really nice and big and heavy. So if you need anybody, do you have anybody in your life who wants that weighted um, blanket feel? This is great for that because the blanket is actually quite heavy, um, which I love. I personally love it. Uh, but you can also make them smaller. So I have a littler version here that is, I think it's 40 by 50 or so. Okay. So this is a little smaller version. Very nice. Great little throw. Nice for wrapping up, hanging out, sitting in bed. They're really nice. Um, so you can make it smaller or you can make it even smaller. So today we're gonna make one that I'm just using one yard of fabric and then we're just gonna split it in two, make a front and a back out of that. And so basically it's a quarter of the size that your quilt would be if you follow the instructions. So the great thing about this pattern and so many of our patterns is that the size doesn't really matter. You can make it whatever size you want to. Okay, so that if you want to have a blanket that is 30 by 40, it's fine, you can make one that's 60 by 70, you can make it whatever size you want to, okay? Um, doesn't matter. All right, so I'm gonna put these to the side, and then I'm gonna show you, that's this, I'll show you this later. Okay, and I'm gonna show you some fabrics that we can use, okay? So I wanna talk a little bit today about Lux Cuddle and the kind of fabrics that we can use for this project, um, depending on what you have, what your local stores have, um, and what you want it to look like, feel like, okay? So one of the things about our cuddle fabrics is we always say that it's 58, 60 wide. So which means it's 58 to 60 inches. Depending on the substrate, it can be... Oh, we're, back. We're, back? we're back. Okay, so you want me to stop? Okay, we're gonna try again. Okay, guys, sorry. Whew, we're gonna keep trying this until it works. Um, Internet's a thing. Okay, so the fabric, the Lux Cuddle, is 58, 60 inches wide. So that's what we always say. So um, I just wanted to show you some different ones that you can use for making this blanket and why you might want to do them the same on both sides. So you'll notice that my samples, I use the same fabric on both sides. We've done this, cl in a, um, we've done this class in a few shops. We did it recently at a shop called The Quilted Crow in Kansas. And um, you can use the same fabric on both sides. Makes it easy because they're both going to be the exact same size. If you use two different fabrics, they might be slightly different, okay? So I'll talk you through how, you, how we work with that if you want to do two different fabrics. But the, um, I just wanted to show you some different ones that work really well for this. Um, so this one I think might be a Whistler. I wish Annette was here. Annette knows all the names of the fabrics. Um, this is one of our hides, I believe. Might be Heather. Okay, really nice, silky. This is that weave that I told you I like so much. And this one is called Brooklyn. Okay, so these are all fabrics that you could use. Um, but I wanna see if they're different widths. So that's why I brought them out actually. Okay, they're all really nice. But I bet they're gonna be different widths. So I'm move this fabric over here. Okay. 
This one is a really, um, is a really fun one because it sort of looks like it was knitted or something. The same with this. I like it because it's a little bit different um, look than just typical cuddle. Okay, so this one I can already tell this one is a little bit shorter. Okay, not a big difference, but a little bit. And really the biggest thing is when they're um, an inch or two difference, it can really can make a difference putting them together. Okay, that one's a little bit wider than this one. So this would be the first thing I would want to do if I was going to put two different substrates together. Okay, so you can see this one is actually quite a bit shorter than some of the others. So it went, these two are the same. This one is a little bit shorter under here. The weave is a little bit shorter. This one is a hide and it's quite a bit shorter. Okay, so if I were to sew this one to this one, which would look nice and be a great front and back, I would need to make sure that this uh, edge stays even in the seam allowance or that I cut off an inch or inch and a half, whatever that is, okay? So I would wanna make sure that those sides even up somehow, either by leaving a larger seam allowance on one or putting them together and um, cutting the, uh, the one edge, okay? So that's just a sample of the different fabrics we can use and how we would use them, okay? Toss that to the side and have quite a mess of a uh, Lux Cuddle over there. Uh, okay. So now I've got my big piece of fabric. So what I've done is I've cut a yard of fabric and I'm just gonna make it so that it is uh, half that size, okay? So what I really, what I could do is I could actually sew them together like this and not cut this, okay? I'm gonna show you how to cut it because I want you to remember and, and for those of you who are just joining us um, for the first time to learn how to cut the fabric um, the easier way. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna cut the fabric and cut it into two sections. This is the only time that you can really fold it in half and use it. A lot of times people wanna do that for the back of quilts and they wanna just fold it in half but then if you're doing it a long one, you're folding it in half this way, and so the naps are going opposite directions, which you don't want, okay? You want your naps to go in the same direction. In this situation, they will. They'll go the same direction, okay? But I'm going to cut it in half. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it at 30 inches, okay? Because that's what I, well, actually what I should do is fold this in half, measure it, and see what my half measurement is. I say 30 inches, but that's going on the fact that it could be 58, 60, and we just measured it and saw that it was not as wide. Okay, so if I measure this, oh, look at that, it is, it's almost 30. So that means the other ones are a little bit more than 30 inches, okay? So I'm gonna measure 30 inches from the side over to uh, the middle, and that's where I'm gonna cut it. Okay, so I'm gonna use my ruler here that I've got, this is um, the one that comes with that board that I use underneath the magnetic board. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump this up. It's got like a little T-square. So that's my zero mark. And then I'm gonna come over here and mark 30. And I'm just gonna do that a few times. So however you wanna mark your 30 mark, that's what I would do. Okay, I don't really rely on the fold. You can use the fold, but it's not always folded exactly in half. Um, if you've ever seen them double and roll the fabric, it's definitely like a, uh, it's an interesting process. Yeah, it really, it's kind of fun to watch. Okay, so the other thing you'll notice that I do is that I kind of squish this out because it wants to kind of um, fold in on itself a little bit. So I'm just trying to keep it as straight as possible. Okay, so there we go. That, mark it again. And I'm just going to put a few of these marks. So what I found whenever I'm cutting cuddle is that the more that you can lay it out and measure it and mark it and then cut it, the better. So if you try to just lay this out and whack it in half, um, you can do it. It's just definitely not going to be as accurate. Okay. All right. So now I've got my little mark. So I've got a few marks down this side or down the middle. Okay, so you can see these, I've got some marks on here. I'm gonna use my ruler again. And I'm just gonna mark that. And make them match. Okay, so if they don't match perfectly, I'm just gonna kinda wiggle things around until it's a nice, uh, is that a median? Or it's just kinda right down the middle. Okay, blend them together. 
All right, so there we go. So now we've got the whole thing marked. Okay, and I'm gonna cut this with my blade, but I have to find it first. Oh, there it is. Okay, so if you haven't seen this before, this is the little tool that I like so much for keeping the mess down when I'm working with Cuddle. So it's the Ulfa blade. Um, it is the SAC, it's an artist knife, stainless steel um, snap off blade. So you can find it at some quilt shops, you can find it at some artist stores. Um, a lot of art places, uh, arts and crafts places have them uh, or something similar. So basically it's, um, it's a mix between an X-Acto knife and a, um, a box knife. So it has the snap off blades like a box knife would have, but it has the nice sharp point that an X-Acto knife would have. So it's a nice blend. I like it best of the blades that I've tried. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold some tension here and I'm gonna start dragging that down the back of the fabric. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna cut it. So I'm, cut, I'm pushing, I can tell I'm pushing a little bit too hard because I'm getting more hair than I want to. Okay, which probably means that I need to change my blade. One thing you'll notice is usually when you're pressing too hard, it's because you've realized it's not cutting as well. So you press harder and then it makes more mess. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going down here. You'll also notice that I keep the blade as flat as I can along the fabric. So I'm not dragging it like this. I'm dragging more of the blade down, which that, um, that shape of the blade really helps. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys. So my blade needs to be replaced and I can tell because it's really not cutting very well. So this is how I do is I use my little hemostats. I click this guy out. I'm gonna grab it. Snap it off, come on little guy. Of course it's not gonna wanna do it because I'm showing you. Come on. I've done this a hundred times, why is it not doing it? There we go. I just had to pull it back in a little bit more. Okay, so then I don't have to actually grab the blade, which is sharp, um, and I can put it to the side. Okay, my little hemostats are magnetized, so <laughs> they're just holding onto it, which is great. Okay, so now I've got a nice sharp blade. Yeah, much better. Okay. Yeah, definitely need to be replaced there. All right, so then I'm gonna come back up here. I'll do that little blip. Okay, put my blade away. I'm gonna take these to the side and just give them a little shake. Okay. Get my dust out of here. I'll vacuum when I'm all done. Okay, so now I've got two pieces that are this size, that are basically 30 by 36 inches, okay? So now I wanna sew them together. I'm gonna make sure that my nap is going the same direction, okay? So I can pet them and I can tell. I can also tell because um, I'm gonna want my selvage to selvage because that's how it would have folded together, okay? So here's the selvage and here's my selvage. So these two are gonna need to be, get, be together, all right? The cut sides are gonna go back together. All right, so I'm gonna lay these so they match. So there's a couple of different ways of putting this together. Um, really, all we're doing is sewing around all four sides, turning it inside out and top stitching it. But because it's cuddle, there's a couple of little things that you need to know about doing that. So one of them is that it's gonna stretch in one direction and not in the other. So um, if you remember, cuddle stretches widthwise, so it'll stretch this way but not lengthwise, which is this way, okay? So widthwise when I'm sewing it, that's gonna wanna stretch, so I'm gonna be more careful when I'm sewing that direction, and I can be a little less crazy with the pins on the lengthwise because it doesn't stretch. So what I like to do is I like to start on the selvage side. Most of the time those selvages are pretty straight, and um, I can just use those to start with. So I'm gonna start my pinning there, okay? So I'm gonna get these together. I'm gonna pull this back. So with the way that cuddle works, if you have um, come to any of my classes here or in person, you'll know we want to keep the weight on the table, okay? Because cuddle is heavy. And so if I lay this where I just have this part on the table, it will want to keep falling off. So I'm going to fold that up on the table again so you guys can see how I do it, okay? So basically I just get it on the table and then I sort of accordion fold it. 
so that it's all in a little hunk right here, okay? And then I can work with it. It's not going to fall off the table. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, it's not going to do anything um, bothersome today. Okay, so because we are working with the selvage side, it doesn't stretch, okay? You can see selvage doesn't stretch. It's going to sew a little bit easier than the side that has the stretch. So this time I don't have to pin as much, so I don't do the double pinning that I normally do. Um, in fact, I've got my little um, my little clips here. So these are my little wonder clips. You can use those or the big guys, whichever you prefer or have. And I'm just going to wonder clip the the start of the seam, the end of the seam. I'm going to make it fit in between. Because Cuddle is a knit fabric and it's plush, it's hard to get a perfectly accurate cut. So yours may not be exactly 36 inches long, and that's fine. What we're going to do is we can actually hide a lot in those seam allowances. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it fit. And um, we'll just sort of ease in if and where we need to. All right. So I've got my ends and my middle pinned, I mean clipped. I'm going to clip in between there and then I'm going to do my row of pins. Okay, so I'm really just substituting that first row of pins with the clips here. All right, and I have found that on this project that works perfectly fine because the clips hold it well enough because it doesn't have the stretch. Okay, so on the other side, um, you could try it with the clips and then if it moves too much, just go back and pin it more. Um, I will pin it, I will do the double pinning on the stretchy sides just because I prefer that. It makes it easier for me. But you can do what you want. So now I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to pin in between my wonder clips. And I'm going to try to pin far enough down that I don't have to take those pins out. That I'll just take the wonder clips out as I go. Okay, but we'll see. Sometimes I have to take them out. Okay, so basically I've done the double row of pinning, but one row with wonder clips and one row with pins. All right, and that works, like I said, especially well because it is um, a cut of the cuddle fabric, or and it's the, the length size, lengthwise size, excuse me. Um, so a lot of times when you're doing something like this, what you want to do is you, you want to start here, sew all the way around, leave a hole, turn it inside out. But when we're working with cuddle, what I have found is if you try to do that, it ends up shifting the whole way. And by the time you go back over to this corner, you actually have like a little, I want to say a pouch, and that's not quite the right word, but you'll have excess fabric, okay? So it's easier. You'll have a much better sew. Um, it'll be more accurate if you actually work at one side at a time. And besides, then you have less pins um, hanging out in your lap. So we'll have one side. We'll get on the other side, the other side, and then the other. So um, we're going to sew. Do we have any questions? Nothing? We're doing well? People leaving their state? Okay, good. City and state, I want to know. Um, also, let me give you a quick little... Um, Recap of the stores that I know who are open, you can come around, um, that are open and selling our fabrics, okay? So if you check with your local, um, if your local quilt shop, a lot of them are still shipping and um, or you're able to buy things, you can call them and ask them too. Um, they don't always have it online, but all the shops that I know of that are still operating um, through this are definitely willing to work with you, give them a call, see what they've got. They're probably going to FaceTime you and see the fabric okay but I know these guys are selling it um, so this is quarry quilts and yarn in sandstone Minnesota so much love in Granbury Texas willow tree fabrics in Decatur Alabama time flies quilt and sew in Nagani Michigan Cali Quilt Co. up in Sacramento Missouri Star Quilt Company and the sewing machine shop in Walnut Creek California. Okay, so if any of those are near you, check them out. If we have any shops that are here watching, please post in the comments and let us know where you are and how we can um, support you because we really just want people to be able to find the fabric. So please share. If you know of a quilt shop near you that's selling the fabric um, and selling uh, their notions and stuff still, please let us know. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm going to sew this. I've got it set on a straight stitch, and I'm going to pop my stitch length up to it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> up to a three. So it's a straight stitch, um, just a three millimeter stitch length, which is a little bit longer than normal. Okay, and I've got a stretch needle in here, and I've got um, Mettler thread, which is just a polyester thread. All right, and it's the one that um, I like the best. So I've got a medium gray in here. I use medium gray for basically everything. So um, that's what I'm going to work with today. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little back stitch here. 
go forward, go back. And then I'm just going to use, this is, um, this is technically one-eighth, one-quarter, three-eighths, and one-half is over here. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that I'm going to get past my selvage and using this as basically a half inch-ish. It's closer to three-eighths because that's just what I do. Um, you just want it big enough that you're catching both edges, okay? So one of the things that I've noticed when I'm working with the cuddle on this project is that you will end up with, um, with it sort of... I don't know, gathering too much on the top. So you can see it's kind of fluffy here. So I really just want to keep um, kind of two hands on it. So I just guide it through like this. Okay, and I just keep my hands on either side of it and let it come through. So for me, that's the biggest thing is because if I don't keep a hand on both sides, it'll want to start to gather up on the top here and not stitch very straight. Okay, so you can see that the Wonder Clips hold it well enough. I just keep an eye on this edge to make sure I can see both edges, and then I'm covering the little selvage holes. Okay, they won't actually show when we're done here because there's so much fluff, but um, I figure for stability purpose, I should probably do that. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna sew right along here. I said three, sti three millimeter stitch length. If your machine is having any issues, you can just open up that stitch length to like a 3.5. Okay. And I'm just gonna back stitch at either end and then we'll take it back over the table and do the next side. I am, I'm using the digital dual feed. Um, on my baby lock here. All right, you can come over here. Um, so we're just gonna be working back and forth. Okay, so let me grab my pins. Oops, sorry. I got a lot of stuff here. Oop, oop. Lost some. All right, so I'm gonna take my pins back over here on my Wonder Clips and I'm gonna get out all of those pins that I left on the side. Got them all, good, good. Um, when I was doing this the other day, I was making the other sample. I actually left one in until I had turned it and then I found it, so be careful. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna do the next side. So I've got this one. What I wanna do is I always want to start sewing so that I'm gonna cross one of these lines as I start, okay? So I can't start sewing here, I have to start sewing here. So I need to pin it from this side, okay? Because I'm gonna put it in here, cross that path. We always wanna cross these because it'll make it stronger, okay? Because we're not gonna do a corner where we're reinforcing it, we're just gonna stitch over it and that will make it stronger. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hold these together. And I'm gonna do the little burp, 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 little accordion thing. All right, so now I've got these two edges together, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, but I'm gonna do it all with pins, okay? And I'm doing it all with pins on this one because this is the stretchy side. So this side will stretch a lot, okay? So this one moves on me, and the stretch and the fluff added together just give it less stability. So I'm gonna pin it so that it has more stability and doesn't um, you know, move on me too much while I'm sewing. So I'm going to pin it and pin that top row, the center, the side, the side, then pin in between. So this is where we end up having basically a million pins. Okay. So somebody commented last time that I was lucky I didn't stab myself too much while I was sewing. And it's not true. I stab myself all the time. <coughs> Could you grab the, the drink for me? All right. Okay, so now I'm going to keep pinning. Sorry. All the talking. It is, yes. It's a baby lock crescendo. Um, I've had it for a little bit over a year now. I really, really love it. It works beautifully with um, the cuddle fabrics. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a really good machine. All right, so now I've got my double row of pins. So I used pins completely on this one and not the clips at all, okay? Um, so, and the reason, like I said, I'm doing that is because this one has more movement. So I'm just trying to keep that movement in check. 
Okay, so I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna start so that I can cross this seam that we already sewed. So we sewed this last. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna start just before that, go over that and keep going. All right. Okay, I'm gonna back stitch so I go over that seam and then I'm gonna keep going. Like I said, it's about a half an inch. Mine is a little bit smaller. That's totally fine. Okay, you just want it big enough that it's gonna catch. It's one of the nice things about working with the cuddle fabric is the seam allowances usually aren't too big of a deal. Um, so you can see I'm doing the same thing or I'm just keeping a little bit of tension, keeping it nice and flat as it feeds in. I'm gonna keep an eye on these pins. This one I can see is a little close. I might run over it, so I'm gonna move it so I don't stitch that head into my into my blanket, which I have seen done a lot of times. So one of the things that I do is back here, I can feel there's a pin. So as I grabbed it, I could, oops, I stabbed myself. So I just pull it out. Okay, so once it's past the foot, it doesn't matter. The other thing you'll notice is that I have it all up onto the table. Okay, so as I'm sewing, I have this huge amount that's just over here. So when you're working with a big blanket, that's the way this is gonna be. It's gonna be a, you know, four yards of fabric that are on the side of your machine. So make sure that you're working in a place where you can put that up on the table if you need to move your um, sewing table to the, you know, your sewing machine to the other end of the kitchen table so that you can have that whole space. Do that because you'll want to keep it up off the off the weight of the or the weight off of the needle. Because if you have it in front of you, it wants to all pull down. And that's not what we want. We want it to feed through the machine easily. Um, it's one thing that I have found a lot of times in classes that makes a huge difference. Okay. Backstitch, take that out. There was a note. Is there any, uh, any concern about backstitching with the digital tool? No, I have heard that you cannot, and I have, didn't hear that until about a year into using it, and um, I've never had a problem with it. So, yeah. I've been asked that a couple of times that they were uh, told that you couldn't backstitch with it and you just saw me do it twice. So <laughs> it totally works and I'm not sure, yeah, where the idea comes from that you can't. Okay, so on here, you can notice I got a little bit off. Okay, so here's my edge. There's my, it's about a quarter of an inch off now. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that when I stitch this, I stitch it over a little bit further. Okay, not gonna worry about that at all. I caught that fabric down in there. Yeah, doesn't want to pull out. I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so now I'm going to do the third edge. All right. Okay. So I'm going to work my way around in a circle. It doesn't actually matter. At least I haven't found that it matters at all whether I do top, side, side, bottom, or if I do top, side, bottom, and then side. Okay, whichever way works best for you. I totally, uh, any of them have worked for me. Okay, so I'm going to clip this over here. I'm gonna pin I'm gonna pin it real quick here. Okay. So this is my uh, lengthwise, okay, so it doesn't have the stretch. So I can just pull it nice and taut. Okay. So I'm gonna fold that up, do the little accordion thing again. Okay. Get it so that I can have it on my board and pin it. Okay, so I'm gonna clip this the same way that I did before. Where I'll do a bunch of clips along this edge and then I'll do some pins in between. Okay. So basically, I know that it's uneven here, but I'm gonna even it up pretty quick and just let that be not perfect, all right? Right, and the, um, the pins that I'm using today are those clover pins that I like so much. Um, they're really good, they're nice and sharp. They work very well for this product. Okay. So I don't know if you can tell measurements so well from there, um, but I've got this pin, I'd say about an inch, do you think, from the raw edge? About, a, about an inch from the raw edge. Um, yeah, it's about the width of your foot. So and normally on a, um, just you know, on a regular walking foot, the edge of your foot from the needle is about a half an inch. So that works really well for re just a regular walking foot. All right, so I'm going to put this back. We're going to do the same thing again. Okay, and I'm just going to go forward. I'm going to back stitch over where I stitched before. Okay. 
and I've got that a little bit heavy and I'm just going to let it feed itself in because I had um, gotten that a little bit off at the end, which you can see, even the professionals do that. Okay. Okay, so now I can go back up here and I can check. So this is where it was a little bit short. You see, I just fed the, I evened it up for the seam. All right, but I wanna make sure that I caught that because now is the time to double check. So when you make those little mistakes like that, just go back and check, like I fixed it, but I wanna make sure that I actually fixed it. If I had been over here too far, I wouldn't have caught it or I'd have just caught the edge and I would still wanna go over here and fix it again, okay? That's one of those places too that if you have to fix that a second time, like say I didn't catch it when I came through there, I would not take my stitches out, okay? I would just stitch over it, add another little seam in there. Okay, really the, uh, I take out as few seams as I can with this stuff. Okay. All right, we're just going to come right along here, and then we'll have our bottom. Okay, so you notice that I just keep fidgeting with it, trying to get it nice and flat. There's no way to get it all nice and flat before you feed it in there and then also keep the weight off of it. Um, so you're just going to have to fidget with it. I just sew a little, move things, sew more. And it's, this is literally how I sew it all the time. Okay. Come up here, I'm gonna just keep that in place. Okay, and I can feel it getting caught up. Can you guys see that, how it get, got caught up behind my digital dual feed? Sometimes that happens, I just gotta let it out. Okay, so I can feel it start to bulk up under there. I just need to fix it. Okay, do a little back stitch. There we go. All right. Okay, so now I've got three sides done. Okay, so now I'm now I'm to the last row <clears throat> or the last seam. Do the same thing and get this ready to sew. So on this one, I need to make it so um, that I can envelope it basically, so I can sew it, um, so I can flip it. All right, so I notice that when I do this, it looks like this side has a little bit extra from how I cut it, that I didn't cut it perfectly, okay? So this side has a little bit of fluff right here. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna do this. So that when I pin it, that side is gonna be on the bottom and it's gonna feed that in because it'll be against the feed dogs, okay? That was a good one. Okay, this is when I should have my magnetic pin cushion and I left it on the other side okay there we go so what I want to do is I'm going to pin this and this is my stretchy side again okay and you can see it we talked about this last time is that when you pull it it wants to curl this okay so if you do any like real stretching that curl like this will actually just stay so we don't want to stretch it too much okay so I'm going to get this so that my edges are even okay so I've got my raw edges even and I'm going to put a, a pin in the middle and I've got my ends are already basically pinned because I sewed the seams already. So now I'm just going to pin in between all of those. Okay, so I'll pin in the middle and then pin in the middle of those and pin in the middle of those and then pin again. <laughs> we just keep pinning. Okay, so this is the stretchy side needs more pins, not stretchy side needs less pins. All right, so I have found that if I use those wonder clips on the, on the not stretchy side, it works really, really well, okay? But it still needs that second row of pins. So don't forget that that second row of pins is really what keeps it nice and stable while you're sewing. If you don't do that and you only do the wonder clips up here, it's really gonna move on you and you don't want that, okay? So I'm gonna pin this here. Um, you'll notice that I added the bulk of the fluff or the extra over here, not fluff, but the extra that I need to feed in. I put it up here at the beginning. So that way, if it doesn't feed in quickly, I have the whole way to catch up. So that if it doesn't feed in, I'm not trying to feed it all in over here at the very end, because if it grew at all, I would be really in trouble. So at this point, I can sort of keep it, um, yeah, just in check a little bit better, okay? Keep it where I want it to be. I'll let it feed in as I go. It'll um, just move forward. All right, so, oh, I almost forgot, you guys. So I did that thing that people sometimes do, is that you sew the whole thing shut, and then you can't actually flip it. So let's not do that, OK? 
okay? Um, so not be the first time that happened in a class either. It would be the first time I did it, but it would be, be the first time. It happens a lot. So we need to leave a little hole that we can turn this, okay? Generally about six inches works perfectly fine. Okay, I do little double pins to remind me that this is my start and my stop. All right, so that's how I mark it, is I parallel pin for everything except for where I want to stop. Okay, so I'll sew to there, I'll do a little, the little L that we like to do for turning, come back over here, do the same thing. All right, did anybody else catch that, that I was going to sew it shut? <laughs> <laughs> It would have been a fun one. People would be like, what is she doing? Okay, so I do the little back stitch again. Get it going. Okay, and you can see it feeds through really nicely. Um, make sure that you're using a walking foot of some sort. Um, the I IDT program, I think, I think it's called an IDT that's on a FOF. Somebody will, somebody will correct me. Um, that's actually in the machine. It works that way. Um, there's a lot of dual feed things that are in machines now. I still find that a walking foot works best and especially if you're working with a lot of uh, layers of cuddle. So make sure that you're checking things out. And the other thing you can do is uh, lower the presser foot pressure. Okay. All right. So I'm coming up here on my little sitch where I need to end it. Okay. So I'm going to come up here oops, and take these pins out and lift my foot and rotate it. Okay, I'm going to sew right off the edge. So this is what I talk about whenever I talk about like sewing. You're just going to sew a little L right there. <laughs> That's what I mean. Um, and we're going to talk about that a lot because if you haven't noticed, I do it a lot. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is because I want this to still be at basically a half an inch and I don't necessarily want to just eyeball it, I'm going to stick it into here where I was using it, put my needle down, take my pins out, then I'm going to sew the, the down part, okay? Um, you can yell if that didn't make any sense. Okay, so now I'm going to twist this, go back. Now my seam allowance is a little more accurate to where I wanted it to be. Sometimes it's hard to eyeball that stuff. Okay, I'm just going to sew right along here. Keep taking the pins out. Okay, my last pin, I've got it all eased in. Feel it getting caught up behind the foot again. All right, now we're gonna take it out. Okay. All right. So now we've got it all sewn together. So what you can do, if you want, you can clip your corners. I will show you. Oops. On this one. You can't really, you can't feel it, but you can see it at least. So this one, I did not clip my corners and I turned it inside out. It's a little bit, um, it's dense there. You can see I can't really pinch it real tight because there's a lot of layers where I can pinch it real flat here. But visually, I can't see it, okay? So I can't tell that there's a bunch of, you know, seam allowance in here when I look at it, so I leave it. You are welcome to cut this off. Okay, so on this corner, on these corners, you're welcome to cut this and trim those corners and make it less bulky. I do not. Um, so that's what this result is, is I just leave it and then it seems to be fine to me. The corner is a little bit rounder than it might be. It doesn't come to as much of a point, but also means I don't have to cut the cuddle again. So I don't, okay? So that's how we're gonna do this small one the same way is that I'm just not gonna cut it, okay? So we're just gonna stick our hand in here what I do like to do is find all of my corners and then I shove them in real good. Okay, so from this side, I will shove my corners in with my finger as tightly as I can. So really, I just got my finger in here and I'm just, you know, gonna shove it in there. Okay, and then down here, we're gonna do the same thing. Turn that, push the corner out. Okay and over here too. And then when I flip it, the corners are just out and I don't have to shove my whole arm back in there to go find those corners. Okay, so then I'm gonna grab the top here, drag it out. Okay, and then the corners are sort of already out. Okay, they just pop right out. All right, there's the corner. Pull it right out, 
And we'll find the fourth one. It's around here somewhere. I swear to God, there were four corners, right? <laughs> There's one. Oh, here it is. It's hiding. Pink. Okay. Okay. So now we have our little blanket. Okay. So at this point, um, it looks like an envelope sewn together. It's just two pieces sewn together. So the way that we make this a little bit nicer is we do this top stitching. Okay. So now we're going to go back in here and we're going to top stitch. And I want to show you a couple of things. Okay. So on this one, I did this one and I did it, I think it's a little bit more than an inch. It's a really big ruler to measure that with. Yeah, it's a little bit more than an inch. I used a spot on my, my machine, and I'll show you in a second what I used. Um, this one here is one that is done that has a much larger, if I can find an edge here. Here we go. So this one, this is with our glacier. Here is the seam. So the top stitching here was actually like more like three inches, okay? So you can see it just, it doesn't really make a huge difference. It kind of is just what you prefer. I've always done a smaller one. Today we're going to do a little bit bigger and see what I think. All right. Um, so really that is very much personal preference. I also think that the larger ones with, if you have a, a larger seam allowance, it kind of gives it a little bit of a flange look. Really in the end you can see, especially if you go back in here and you take up your, your fibers, like I like to do with the stiletto, it sort of just loses any edging there at all, okay? So really just personal preference, but what it does is it tacks it down, holds it together as one blanket, and those two pieces become one a lot better than um, like this where they're still just two floppy pieces. It keeps, gives that a nice little edge, okay? So before we do the top stitching, I need to hand stitch the open and close. I need to find out where I did this. So um, when I do this, I do, see if I can find my needle. There it is. Okay, so I've just got a needle that I threaded before and I've got some polyester thread in there. I've got my Mettler, the same stuff that I stitched it with. Okay, you can see that this thread doesn't match and it won't matter. This is the same thread that I used on that darker one and it worked just fine. Okay, so one of the things about working with the cuddle is because it's a knit fabric, it's got like more of an open weave Okay, the weave is different. It's not a really tight weave. So what happens sometimes is these knots come out. So I make a really like sort of big, ugly, obnoxious knot down here. I usually knot it a couple of times. Um, just because then it can't get through. So see, not a pretty knot at all. Not a lovely quilter's knot. It's big, it's ugly, but it will not pop through. Okay, so then what I do is I come back under here and I'm gonna grab it here. So what I wanna do is I wanna put my needle up through here so that I'm sort of securing it in that seam before I start sewing, okay? So now I'm gonna pop my needle up here. And the way I do this is I just sort of eyeball it. <laughs> so I pop it in. You can see that those, where that stitch, where we stitched in those little L's, it makes it so it wants to turn in, okay? So I can get that nice and even. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that just a little and I'm going to clip it so that I'm not losing track of it. Okay, and then I'm just going to do a big ladder stitch is what I'm going to do where I go in one side, it's kind of just by feel. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to stab in that fold. Okay, and then I'll come back over here. I'll do it again. Okay, so nice big stitches. These are probably quarter inch stitches or so. Um, it's really never gonna get tugged again. Like that stitch or that seam is really pretty, pretty away from any stress. Okay, I did use a double thread, you can see, just because I wanna be able to tug it and make it nice and smooth, but you can see it just, it's gone basically. Okay, super great. So I'm gonna do a few more stitches. Get that thing all closed up. Okay, so what I tend to do here, you'll notice, is that I'll do three or four stitches, I'll let them be loose, and then I tighten it all up. Okay, it's easier for me to keep track of things that way. You'll also see it doesn't really matter where you're stitching, just make sure that you're getting both sides, because that's, that's one area is make sure that, like when I tug this, I can feel that I've got the backing, and that's what I want is to make sure I've got the backing, that I'm not um, just grabbing fuzz, because it's not gonna stay that way. Okay. So make sure you got a good good handle on it. All right, we're gonna tug it again. Okay, a couple more stitches in there, and then that whole thing will be sewed shut. 
Okay. So today's giveaway, which we're gonna do later, so make sure that you've put your city and state in there. Leave your comments. We will totally pick a winner from all of the comments. And um, the winner is gonna get to choose which fabric they want, but you'll be able to make the large version of this blanket, okay? I'll show you the fabrics in just a, just a few. And the question is why, why don't you use a machine? <clears throat> Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so I, in class, a lot of times we'll do this, we'll just zigzag it shut. What happens though, what I have found, and actually I could probably, well, I'll show you on another piece. What happens is it's just too, too um, visible. That one I can't hide because it's on the edge. So um, most of the times you can hide stitches really well and cuddle, and what I have found is on that edge I can't. Um, so you absolutely can stitch it there. My personal preference is to hand stitch it, okay? So it's absolutely doable. It's just a personal preference here that I, I hand stitch it because then I'm able to completely hide this seam, okay? Which I like. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take this piece here, okay? And these, I stitched it over here. I'll show you in just a second what I was trying to show you. But let me show you what the zigzag does on here, okay? So I'm gonna pin it because that's what I would do if I were going to sew a zigzag. Okay, so I would pin it so I can make sure I'm going to set a nice big zigzag. So let me change that. I'll get my... See, I did it the smart way that time. <laughs> Don't stab yourself. Okay, so here's my big wide zigzag, just a regular zigzag, five wide, five long, okay? All my little threads there. It's gonna live there. Okay, so I've got a nice big zigzag. Here's where my stitching stops. So I'm just gonna zigzag over this so we can get that in there, okay? So what I want is my stitch, when I do the left side stitch, when it comes down over here, is I want it to just come off the fabric and then the rest of it is over here, okay? So I'm gonna do a little lock stitch. Okay, and I can feel it, you can't really see it, but the, the edge of the fabric is actually clear over here. Okay, so when I let go, all that fluff is there, but this is actually the edge of the fabric. Okay, so keeping that in check while you go is important because if you're just sewing on the edge of the fluff, you're gonna totally miss the edge of the fabric. Okay, so now I can cut it. Okay, so this, it ends up with this zigzag over the top. You can totally hide this okay. I can just still see it and I don't like it as much. Um, it depends on the fabric, how much it hides. And see, it, it does okay. I don't know, yeah, just personal preference. I don't like the way that looks. It's much faster, obviously, but I'm also leaving a small hole when I hand stitch it. So the key for me is just to leave a small hole and hand stitch that and I like the finish better. It also makes it really flat here along the edge so the rest of this curls because of the the seam allowance that's in here it's like fluffy and rounded and then here where i zigzagged it it's smushed flat so it really is just yeah like i said personal preference whatever you like let me show you before i put this away before we do the top stitching let me show you something because this is a question i get is can you serge it and you absolutely can okay so if you want your um, seam allowance to be nice and flat that's what you can do let me turn this See if I can get this come around. So if I do that and I squish it, this is really nice and um, smushed. How, you feel it and tell me what you think. So that, oh, it's or, almost, yeah, it's almost not there. Yeah, and, and then over here. really feels the extra thread. Yeah, and then down here you can feel it and it's fluffier, it's like poofier. Yeah, I can, I can feel the seam allowance. Yeah, like so really it's just like, um, it's a textural thing, really. This doesn't do any difference in how long your seam will last or how strong it is. Okay, the serging is really just for a finished look. I know a lot of people have done them this way. Some people will put the whole blanket together this way. To me, I don't have the control that I want with the serger, so I don't. This is a really great finish though if you're gonna use um, cuddle for like a jacket or anything like that, uh, a hat. So if you serge those edges, it makes a really nice finish that's much um, nicer looking than that. But on a blanket, for instance, or a pillow or anything like that where the seams are all gonna be hidden, I don't really care if it looks like that and it adds a little bit of fluff to the, the seam allowance, okay? So there's a little inside scoop. 
Um, with the serger, I do pin. I don't double pin because I don't want to pin that close to it um, because that worries me. Uh, but I do do that second row of pins and just make sure that it's for, far enough away. You definitely don't want to go over pins with your serger. Um, one, you break needles, but also you ruin your blade and you have to buy a new one. And that's not fun. Um, okay, so now we're going to sew the top stitching, okay? At this point, I'm going to do pinning again, okay? I'm going to pin on one side and I'm going to clip. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to pin on two sides and clip on the other two sides. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys the difference um, between pinning and clipping, okay? Okay. Um, so just so you guys can see, and maybe you can figure out which one you would prefer. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do the pin. We restarted, we're back again. We're gonna do the top stitching here. Um, so what I've done on this one is I have pinned it about an inch away or so. Okay, and I'm gonna do the top stitching here. So I've pinned it really where I'm going to sew it because I want it to be, just keep it in check. You could pin further away as well. Okay, so we can pin it down here. I'm not pinning a lot. You can see that I'm not um, doing a ton of pins like I normally do because really all we're trying to do is keep these layers together over here, so the top stitching. Because if we, if we um, don't pin it, it will still wanna move, but we don't have to do a lot because it already is secured up here, okay? So I'm gonna pin this direction. I'm gonna pin the other direction too. Okay, so we can just do those two in a nice fell swoop. I like to do um, the, the whole thing at one time is what I do. And so I tend to use the pins and some clips and I can show you how I do that. Okay. So what I'm doing here on the side is I, I'm feeling it to get it to the point so that that seam is on the edge. Okay. Make sure that that's all squished so that you can you can see it you can see where the seam is turned in there okay but really you have to kind of visually just pinch it and then pull the fabric so that it's nice and flat okay that's the um the one area and i don't fluff out those seams until after i'm done all right because i kind of use them to see easily where that edge is okay so if you're doing a large blanket like this you can see so the um the blanket that I did the other one is twice this long. So when I do that, I just do the one side. I pin the whole side, and then I usually clip a little bit, and that's really what I do is I clip some, and then I move my pins, okay? So when I'm doing this, on that big one, I'll throw a few little clips in here just to keep things a little bit better where I want them to be, okay? So now, let me move a few of these over. I'm going to take this back over here. I'm going to reset my machine because I moved it to a zigzag. So I'm going to put it back at a straight stitch. Um, move that up to a three millimeter stitch length. Okay. So you want it at least a three there. If your machine is feeding it nicely, you could you could bump it up even and just because it's really just top stitching. Okay. So when I did the other one, I used um, I used this here as the edge of where my stitching should be. Okay. So I ran the fabric along this edge. All right. So I think I only have my huge ruler. That's pretty funny. Okay. So let's see. This one is a little bit smaller, but if I do it there, so that ended up being just about an inch. Okay. So if I do it here, it's more like an inch and a quarter. If I did it to that line, that's two inches. Okay. So let's try this line. I'll use this one to keep um, my line so that I can do a bigger top stitch and we'll see how that goes okay so really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in I'm gonna line this up here okay because now I know it's starting two inches from that corner I'm gonna turn it and I just eyeballed it we'll see how close I was mm, pretty good I move it just a tiny bit over so I know that this is the um, like the depth from the back that I want okay so I want it to stay along there, but I need to get it over so that this edge is going to be along this edge, okay? So all I did, if you, if it's confusing, all I'm doing is basically making an intersection of two inches from here and two inches from here, okay? So now I've got my needle down and put my foot down, okay? I'm going to do a little lock stitch, and I'm going to work my way around this. Okay, so this is really important that this is all staying nice and flat, 
because that's really going to, you're going to be able to tell. So that's, that's really up to you at this point and keeping it nice and even as I'm coming through. So you can see, I, could, I just use my hand to keep it flat and even along that edge. As soon as I see a pin, I'm going to take it out so I don't run over it. And I'm going to do the same thing and just make sure that this is nice and flat as it's coming in and that it's feeding through the same way. Okay. And then I'm just watching this line right over here to make sure that my fabric is running along there. If it gets a little off, it's okay. Your, um, if your top stitching is uneven, this is totally a place that it doesn't even matter. Mostly top stitching, you have to have it perfect, but this one... It's all gonna hide in there. So if you're a little crooked, it's okay. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna kinda guesstimate. I think it was like, there we go. Okay. Where it needs to turn, yes, okay. And then I'm gonna keep going. You'll notice as you're sewing it, that different directions will sew differently. And part of that is the nap, and part of that is the stretch, okay? So just be aware of it, that the, the sides will sew differently, whether you're going against the nap, you're going with the nap, you're going across the nap, um, that all changes it, and whether you're going with the stretchy side or the not stretchy side, okay? So this is my, um, this was, is that my stretchy side? No, this is my not stretchy. Okay, so what happens sometimes here is that you end up getting that thing where it starts to push this way. So make sure that this is laying nice and flat because you'll get that little ridge in there. Okay, and then the only way to get rid of that is to come back and take it out. So if that happens, just remember that, you know, most of the time people will be wrapping it around themselves and not laying it out flat and that it's still soft. Okay, just gonna keep going. So this two inch border <clears throat> looks like this, which I really like. I think that's a pretty nice width. Um, and then all of these will come back in and we'll, we'll fluff some of those up. Okay, so as I come around. So I'm going to come around to the next corner here. See that, that pin I just flew by because I knew it was far enough away that I was okay. This one I feel like is probably the same. I'm just going to leave it because I can. Boop. getting good at eyeballing that okay so this side I haven't pinned yet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feel my border find it make sure I've got it and I'm gonna clip it I'm actually gonna grab some of these big guys so these are the um, the jumbo wonder clips okay and these I found worked pretty well for keeping a flat oops a bigger area flat Okay, because they go in further. So this I really like when I'm doing the one inch because um, these actually have marks on the back on the lengths. So I think that they are, they start here from one quarter, one quarter, one half, three quarter, one inch. Okay, so you can actually mark using that. So if I do this, I know that that's one inch from the edge. Okay, that's what that is. So I'm gonna put a couple of those on there and I'll show you how this works along that side. Okay, so I'm not actually using those <clears throat> measurements at this point, guys. I just wanted to show you what, they're, what they do. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the winter clips all have little measurements on them. Okay, so I want to keep this flat and feeding in through. So I don't want this all to lay down in front of my machine. I want it to kind of come through. So I'm just going to make sure that it's nice and flat and working through. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna take the wonder, these Wonder Clips out because what I've noticed is that they can't really get past the digital dual feed very well because that's a, it's a big guy back here. Um, but on a normal one, you can probably just leave it there and it'll be okay. I know the Wonder Clips do that too. They work on a, with a regular walking foot. Okay, so I'm just keeping this nice and flat as it comes. Okay, I'm watching this whole area to make sure that it's flat and that I'm not getting any wrinkles like this or that it's pulling this direction. All right, so visually I'm just taking, taking my time and making sure that it's, it's doing what I want it to do. Okay, get up here. We'll do that one more time. 
pivot it, and then we have our last side. Okay, so this one I'm going to do the same way with the clips. So this you can see all of those. You'll notice that two sides will get buried in there really badly. Will need to be picked out later, and then the other two not so much. Oops. Okay, try not to get any little pleats in your fabric like I just did. Okay, and so I'm just feeling this and then clipping it so that that side seam stays right at my side. Okay, if you have ever done this sort of thing, you know how like one side will want to pull further than the other. My masks were doing that a lot this week when I was doing ties. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to stitch right along this side. Make sure that that's feeding underneath my uh, walking foot. Okay. So what I've noticed is there are certain places that I can get a little bit um, lazy with and there are places I can't. And one is keeping this nice and straight. It's really easy to think that it's, um, that it's gonna sew fine and then it won't. So keeping that nice and flat is really, it's important, okay? I'm also keeping all of the blanket up on the table so that as it feeds through, it's not pulling extra weight on my machine. Okay, this little guy is not too heavy, but I will tell you those big ones, they get a lot of weight. Okay, they're real heavy. All right, so we're just gonna keep on coming down. I can see there's my corner. Okay, we've done pretty good. I don't see any big puckers along the way here, which is great. It's always a relief when that happens. Okay, I'm gonna lock my stitch and then I'm gonna cut my thread. All right, so now I can take this out. I'm gonna trim up so it leaves that little, you know, extra bit of thread when it cuts your thread for you. So I'm gonna trim that off. Okay, and then you are basically finished. Because I used a lighter thread on this, you can see the thread in places, right? Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here and I'll do this. This is a great little, um, this is definitely one that works really well for watching TV is because then you get to lay the blanket on top of you while you do this. Yeah, that's a great excuse to cuddle up with it. Okay, so I'm just gonna scratch this up. You can see I just bring all those fibers up and then you can't see my stitches at all. Okay, so you'll never know that you used a, the wrong color thread um, at all if you just pull those stitches back up. Okay, and you want to do that to both sides, and then you'll also do it to these sides here. Um, for me, this is the thing that takes it from being, um, you know, not very well made to being really nice. Okay, so you just bring those right back up. And this stiletto is the um, stiletto from By Annie. It's the one that I really love. Um, there are lots of shops who carry it. Okay, so especially if they're a purse making place, but a lot of other ones do too. Were there any questions in there? <clears throat> a question about the, the, the big wonder mm -hmm. show the package again. Oh, yeah, yeah. These guys. Jumbo. Jumbo wonder clips. Okay what they are there is 24 pieces in this pack um, I don't remember maybe there's a shop owner here who knows how much they cost but I don't remember um, I really like them I don't use them very often but I've found that they're really good for the throws and for the binding on the cuddle quilts okay so you can see I just fluffed up that edge it was looking like this okay so it was all pulled in now it looks like that it's all pulled out much better okay so this you'll want to do this with your blanket um, finish it up make it look really nice at the end super duper easy um trying to think of what else i wanted to tell you guys we need to pick a winner so maybe we have that figured out already um you can come on around okay so i wanted to show you a couple little things um before we go so see it's not so hard guys the lux throws are really easy um they just take a little bit of time. Mostly it's just, you know, taking your time to clip it and pin it. When you are doing the original blanket, um, you're going to get four yards of fabric is what you're going to get from the stores. Get two, and then you'll cut it into two two-yard sections. My, um, my biggest tip on doing that is to lay that fabric out 
flat or to fold it in half and but lay that half out flat okay get it as flat as possible and then measure it do the double measuring thing where you're like really checking to make sure that it's going to be straight across the top square it up if it isn't even you can kind of feed it in ways that i showed you um, where you just leave a larger seam allowance over here or you know you just do things a little differently to make it fit but try to get it as square as possible. For me, that takes laying it out nice and flat, getting the edges even. I clip in a few places, I lay it out nice and um, flat, and then I'll pin it on the other side, okay? Did we have a winner? Is that what that is? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's like my favorite phrase. Um, so when you're doing a large one, just make sure that you're getting it out flat, okay, as big as possible. We found in the classes that if you have um, six foot tables, you know those pop-up tables that we use like at picnics or potlucks, bring the, if you have any of those, especially if you have two of them, if you put two of those out, this blanket will fit completely on the top of that, which makes it really easy for pinning. So um, that's my recommendation is to use your little pop-up table that you might have. Um, is there a better word for those? You know what I'm talking about, right? Those, yeah, the, the picnic tables, the big plastic ones that you can get. Um, those work really, really well. So um, that's my recommendation for it. So we have a winner. I want to show you we have three different kinds of fabric. So we have this one, this one. That did turn out really nice. Um, and then this one, ugh, this is the one that we used a couple weeks ago in that Kimber Bear. I didn't make a blanket out of it, sorry. Um, so this one, so we have, this is the original one I showed you. This is our Lux Cuddle Hide. I can't remember, Ellen, which one was it? It's graphite, charcoal, charcoal, I think it's charcoal. Um, it's hard to remember. And this is our Heather and Quartz, okay? So I have these fabrics and I have enough here because I got a lot to sew with um, while I'm in quarantine here. So we got a bunch, I will send you four yards of whichever one you want, okay? So our winner, are you ready? Drum roll, please. Is Karen M. from Slidell, Slittle, Slidell, I'm guessing, um, Louisiana. Okay, so congratulations, you're the winner. And I'd like you to leave a comment, just tell me which one you want, okay? Well, you want the, you know, this is charcoal, and she wants this one? Oh no, sorry, that was just a... <laughs> That's what Ellen said? Okay, charcoal. This is charcoal, this is Whistler, and this is Quartz, okay? So those are the three ones. We'll clarify and make sure that we're getting you the right one, and I will send you four yards so that you can make your own. Um, also, if you wanted to make four little ones, so the lighter there's color. that. It's the lighter color. This one here, just want to verify. This one is, I love this one so much. It's really pretty. Um, so yeah, I will send you the four yards of that. The pattern is available, like I said, from our blog. So you can go to our shannonfabrics.com slash blog. You'll go to the blog. There's a, um, a new blog post all about it, telling you all of the tools that I like to use, as well as a download for the pattern so that you can make your very own. And like I said, you can make it whatever size you want to. It's all good. Um, and lots of stores are carrying this fabric still. So make sure to check it out. So a couple other little things. So we have a winner. Okay, before we go, I want to show you a couple things. So we just, we, I had asked for this to be made a while ago and um, Laura's probably like, oh, you got that. So this is a cute little pattern I got at Road to California when I was out there. So this is from Quilt Cadets. I showed you her little mood pillow last week. For, it's Latifah Safir is who does these. And um, so this is her, her little pattern. I thought, oh, that's so cute. I really want to get that made. And I knew I was too busy. I was going to be on the road a bunch and I wasn't going to be able to get it made. So I think we had Gail make it, but I'm not really sure. But anyway, I just had to show you because it's just the cutest darn thing. Okay. So this is all done with cuddle applique, which we should probably do at some point. Um, little, little zipper bag throw all your stuff in there. You could totally mix cotton and cuddle with this, but I think cuddle is just the cutest thing for applique. So anyway, I wanted to show you that. The other thing is we want to talk about next week. So next week we are doing the da, drum roll elephant. So not, <laughs> not surprisingly, you guys chose the elephant. Um, the elephant is adorable. It's one of my favorite patterns. I've taught it in a few different places. That road was one of them. Um, yeah, so this little guy is super duper cute. Let me bring him out. He is stuffed really hard. Um, let me get my pattern stuff here. Hold on, guys. Sorry. Um, so this is little Ellie elephant, okay? 
If you want to make this with us next week, we're probably going to spend three days making him because he is, um, he's a thing. So uh, generally in class, it takes us about six hours to make it. So um, we're going to be hanging out next week, probably next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we will make this guy. So this one, I have a few things to tell you. So if you want to make it, I want to tell you that this will be the time to do it because we'll be able to work through it together. Making stuffed animals is super rewarding because they're just so darn cute at the end, but they also can be really odd. And especially if you're a quilter, they're so 3D and there's things that you sew together that don't really make sense when you're sewing it. And then in the end, you turn it out and it's this cute little animal. Animal. So we'll work through all of those things together. Um, people love this one. We, we did it, like I said, at Road, and I think we had 18 women walking around Road to California with their little elephants on their hips. It was adorable. Um, so the pattern is from Funky Friends Factory. Okay, we're gonna put a link in the comments. Ellen should probably do that anytime now that you can download her pattern or you can find it from your local shop. So I'm gonna suggest that you call your local shop first. If you have somebody local who's shipping still, see if they've got the pattern. And um, if they don't have it or you need to download it, you absolutely can. Funky Friends Factory is Pauline and she's a great pattern designer in Australia. So you can download the pattern. The thing is, what we want to do differently is we want to enlarge the pattern. So she tells you on her website how to do that. My favorite way of doing it is just printing it out at 120% on my, on my printer. Okay, so from the printer box, I can do that. If you need to take it, um, if you need to get some help with it, we could probably help you. There's also lots of tutorials on how to do it, how to enlarge it. So what happens is that it makes it bigger. So this is my pattern. This is the original pattern that's just 100%, obviously, because I marked it. Okay, this is 100%. This is at 120%, okay, which makes it much larger. Ta -da! Um, and makes it much easier to sew. So all of her patterns, when I make them, the um, this little lion guy, I think he is at 110 or 120 percent. He might be at 120 percent. I made him at 100 percent once, and he was just like this little teeny tiny thing that was really hard. Um, so he was at. Um, I think maybe 120. This one is another one of her patterns. This is her little hedgehog, which I think is adorable. Um, and this one I actually did at 100%. It was fine because there are less pieces. So he's a little, he's got some nice big pieces. These guys were really easy to work with. And those little feet, um, I made it out of our cuddle suede that we, uh, we used to have. We no longer carry the suede though. But this would work for cuddle as well or for a cotton. So this one works at 100%. If they, what I have found is if they're more complicated, the more they need to be upsized. You can actually make them really large. Um, and we have some that we have made, like the, this elephant we have at, I don't know, three feet tall it's huge so you can totally mess with those patterns next week we'll do it at 120 percent okay that's what we'll be working with i found that's really easy to work with what you'll want to do is you will want to trace get all of your patterns and then you'll want to trace them okay you'll need a main fabric so you'll need this body fabric you can choose to do the feet differently or just the same fabric uh, when we did them the last few classes we've done them the same fabric and people really like that You'll need to have a white. So if you have a cuddle here, that works really well. You could also use a cotton if you needed to. And then something for the inside of the ears, which is the same, that you can use a cuddle or a cotton. And then you'll want to use a luxe cuddle for the outside, okay? It'd be super duper cute. So you'll use, use your fabric, trace your patterns onto it, and then cut those out, okay? And like we've talked about before with cutting, let me show you really fast. So you can use, I need my little scissors. Would you give me those yellow ones right there? Um, so when you're, you, when you're using it, you'll want to trace your pattern out, okay? So I'm gonna pretend like I've traced it. Here's my little, here's my foot, right? It's not the best circle, doesn't really matter. But what I want to show you is you'll trace all of your patterns, lay them out on here, trace around them, then cut them. And then you're just gonna cut them with little bitty snips all the way around here. Okay, if you use big snips, you can, but you're just gonna make a huge mess, okay? So you can see most of this, the cuddle just stays right on there. And then at the end, I can throw it in the dryer, get it all cleaned up and be ready to sew. Okay, so if you wanna join us next week, I would love for you to get that all ready. Get your pattern, buy it, trace it, cut it out, get it ready to go so that you can actually see the pieces as I'm working through them to see how they go together. And maybe you can sew along with me, but if not, you can actually sew in the evening and know what I'm talking about. Um, because some of the pieces are kind of funky. Uh, but you'll be surprised how easy it is to actually go together and how wonderful it is. So that's what we're doing next week.
So join us on Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, you want the fabric, the pattern, eyeballs if you've got them. Um, you can use buttons. We use a little safety eyes because I really like them a lot. Um, and I think that's it, right? Okay, we got our winner. I'll send you some fabric. I'm excited that you're going to have a cute little blanket. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will be happy to answer them. This will be up on YouTube later. So if you need to reference it, it'll be on Facebook and on YouTube. So thank you so much. We'll see you next week for Sew Together Tuesday. And until then, happy sewing.